Good morning. We are so thrilled to have you this morning as we are getting ready to learn a little bit more about Canva, <laughs> something that is definitely taking over uh, as a design tool. And so we are thrilled that you're here this morning trying to grow with us and learn a little bit more about it. So my name is Danita Pimienta, and I'm the executive director for CARE, which is children, athletes, and artists involved in recreational events. I'm also also the TechSoup Connect events coordinator and co-leader, I should say, uh, in reference to it. And I'm here with my bestest buddy that is could do anything tech related and grant writing and all that in the nonprofit sector. That's Aretha Simons. Uh, she's in, and we have another co-leader that's Melanie as well. So we are thrilled that we can be able to come to you and present this information. So just a little bit though about TechSoup Connect. It, this is a worldwide network, as you can see from all the dots that's on here. It's located in a number of countries, usually around 236 and counting. And because this network is all over, we have an opportunity to really connect with one another and make it something that is, is educational for everyone. So along those lines, we hope that you would join us in the process of becoming a, a contributor in some way to TechSoup Connect. Of course, we say it's TechSoup Connect Florida because we hail from the Orlando area, but you can also come from other areas and still help us out in, in events or production, marketing, whatever the case, you wanna handle that chat room as it's going, you are more than welcome. My information is there. It's Danita at care.org. That's C-A-A-I-R-E dot org. And you're able to connect with us and, and we'd be happy to have you on board. Just a friendly reminder, though, we have some events that are coming up and these events are the gatherings like we have here. So next month, we'll be doing the fundraising journey. Why didn't somebody tell me? <laughs> That's a great topic to get some more information on some of the things that might be applicable for your organization in terms of fundraising. And then on June 13th, it's the five costly mistakes nonprofits make, and we definitely want to try to avoid those. So make sure you join us. We'll put the information in the chat in order for you to be able to click the link and you will be able to uh, have all the information uh, sent to you. Enough about me, about TechSoup Connects, all that. We're here to learn more about Canva from one of the creative directors at Synvista Creations. His name is Salim Nuruddin, and he is an incredible individual who has some uh, great experience in terms of graphic design and all like that. And when he learned about uh, Canva, he said, let me take some of my design information and my design skill set, and let's try to go ahead and put that in front of uh, everyone else. And let's see how Canva stacks up. So we'll be interested in hearing his opinions on those as well. The other thing about Salim is that he is a Olympian. Yes, that's right. In the Olympics, running track, all of that, you can see that he probably looks like the, a track runner just sitting there. He just has that whole vibe going on and we love it. So he can take all of that track information and <laughs> he probably designed some things for them too, right? Uh, he could take all of that and maybe get us on the fast track of being able to do some things with regard to Canva. So I am hopeful, Salim, that everything is going to work out for you to be able to share your screen now. And if you want to go ahead and start doing that, you're more than welcome. We look forward to being able to learn so much from you this morning. So welcome, Salim. Thank you, Danita. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be able to uh, present some of this information because it's great information. And I myself, I'm a designer. And I used to not be a fan of Canva at all. I looked at it like, what is this program trying to replace designers, trying to put me on the job, put me out the job? That's how I looked at it. But I began to see that it had so many benefits that even somebody with my skills could make available to people who aren't as into the design field, but they still want to have effective designing for their businesses and anything they're trying to present. And it, it just offered a huge plethora of just attributes that anybody can use. And 
I thought it'd be really good to do this because I want to demystify Canva because as easy as they make it sound, it is still tricky. So I hope that with this presentation, I can break it down and you guys won't be afraid of it and you guys can dive in as well. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna share a presentation with you, but while we're doing this presentation, we're going to actually create a flyer together so we can see exactly how this program works. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So we're gonna start how to create eye-catching graphics with Canva, all right. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. As discussed earlier, I'm Salim Nuruddin. I'm a graphic and web design. Uh, I'm a graphic web and instructional designer uh, with Synvista Creations here in Florida. And I've had over 12 years of experience doing this. And I'm also a two-time Olympian in track and field. Retired. And I, I emphasize the retired. <laughs> okay. Now, here's what we're going to learn in this course. We're going to learn how to log into your Canva account, because if you can't do that, you can't get it started. Number two is we're going to learn how to lay out your canvas. And your canvas is basically what your design is going to go on. Let's say you're doing a postcard. Then your canvas is going to be the size of a postcard. In most cases, that'd be like four by six inches. So we're going to learn how to do that. Uh, we're going to learn how to use images. We're going to learn how to use effects. We're going to learn how to use elements. We're also going to learn how to use text. And then once we're able to put those different objects on our canvas, then we're going to learn how to position and align those different objects so you can effectively display what's being said on your flyer or any type of ad that you're creating. And then the last part is how to save and publish your project. All right, let's get this party started. Now, the first part is logging into your Canva account. And now when you go to Canva, all you need to do is go to www.canva.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, you're going to see two buttons, uh, a, a gray button that says log in. This is if you already have an account and then sign up. And then sign, and both of these require you to put in like an email address and some type of username. And just remember that, and you'll be able to log in after that. And a great thing about it is Canva also works on your phone. It has an app, so it uses the same information. So what on your desktop, that's what you'll, or desktop or laptop, you'll also see that on your phone. And the login information is the same. All right. Now, laying out your canvas. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through the next couple sections. And so we're, we're gonna start here. We'll go through the next couple sections and we'll create the flyer together, but we're gonna use this information that I'm talking to you about right now. So the first part is laying out your, your canvas. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna be clicking on create the create a design button. And we'll go through that once we create the flyer. And that part is in the upper right hand corner. We'll be able to choose exactly what we're going to be creating. In this case, we'll create a flyer. And that part will be available to that part you can choose from. And we can put that down based on what size we need it to be. The next part is we can choose a template for our design. And that's one of the beauties of Canva is that you can choose a template to use that is already created and work from that. So you don't have to recreate the wheel. You have a really huge library that you can just go through and you can choose the one you like, and then you can automatically upload that to your, to your canvas. So based on the canvas that you choose, let's say it's a postcard or uh, an ad for Instagram, it has a whole library of different templates that you can choose to get you started. And these are fully created graphics. They have photos, they have text, they have everything already created. So you could just plug in your information and change it to how we need it. I'll, I'll explain how, I'll show you guys how we're going to do that uh, once we get through the next couple of sections. All right. Once we choose our template, we can choose the different images because we want to put our images in there. 
So we can go through, we can click on the images that are already in that template, and then we can upload our own. And these images can be anything that you have already on your computer, or they could be images that are already in Canvas library. So those both work depending on how you want to do it. You can upload your own images. There's a button on the side that talks about upload and you can see the photo section here. You can also see the upload section right there that's above it. And so you can put in your own images there and you can import them to your canvas. They can, you can use them as the background image, but it allows you to do these different types of freedoms. All right, so before we get to effects, let's go ahead and start our present. Let's go ahead and start our example here. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then I'm going to share again. So I can, let's see here, perfect, okay. Okay, so you guys should be able to see my screen. This is the back menu of Canva. So everybody can see that? Perfect. Okay, so as I said before in the first part, the first thing that we're going to do, we already logged in. So we're already logged in. You can tell because you have your username, uh, your initials up here that shows that you're already logged in. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out our canvas. And the first thing I said was create a design. So you have this big, nice purple button here that you can't miss and it says create a design. We're gonna click on that. And now you see the different options that we have based on what you need. Let's say we want to do a regular flyer. You have this one that's like a regular flyer that you would see online, 5.5 by 8.5 inches. You can do posters, Instagram posts, a resume, and you can even do custom. You can even do custom sizes. So let's say you wanted to do like a regular sheet of paper. You could say, okay, I want to do a custom size, and I can put 8.5 by 11, like a regular sheet of paper. Those are just some of the options that you can do. But in this case, we're gonna go ahead and do the, this flyer right here. So we're gonna click on that. So now we have our blank canvas. And you can see over here, these are the templates that I was talking about that you can choose from. You have all different types. They have, they, they have different rows. They're divided into different subjects. So over here is for you. Peace Flyer, Mother's Day, there's, there's so many, the Black Friday, anything that you need, it has, this is a constantly growing library that you can choose from. So let's say in this case, we want to choose something, let's see here, let's see, let's see, we're going to choose this one right here, this one looks fun, and all you got to do is you just click on it, and it automatically shows up right there. Now, of course, we're not gonna to wanna to keep this information. This is just information that they give you. We're not gonna to wanna to keep these images, but we can change these to whatever we need. So that brings us to the next section, which is images. So we wanna change these images. I, I, I am not in Paris right now, so it's okay, we're gonna change this. So all you have to do, this image right here, we wanna change this to something else. So we can come over here to photos. And now you have a bunch of other photos, a bunch of photos in this library that you can use. Let's say I want it to be cakes. I can just click on that and we have this image. So right now this image is set as the background. So let's say we wanna replace this image. So right now it's in, it's in the background so I can detach this image and it's gone. So this, is, this back here is just a template that we can use. So we want a picture of, the, we want a picture of cakes. So we can click on it and it'll bring it here. Or we can drag it and bring it here. And it automatically lays out where we want it to go. We can also upload images. So let's say I want to upload an image that I have into this library. So I come over here to uploads. So I have all these images that are already in my library. But I want my own image there. So all I do is I go on my computer. And I'm going to do the same thing that we did before, where I drag an image to this library and it automatically appears. But I want this image to replace this image in the back. So all I need to do is take this image, drag it over here, and now that image is there. 
Uh, so what we're going to do is now we're going to go back to our presentation and we're going to get into some of the more ex we're going to get into some of the more advanced techniques here. So I'm going to go back and share to this presentation. You guys can. Are you guys able? No, wait, I'm sorry. I'm in. I shared to the wrong one. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. OK. All right. We are back. So you guys can see that? Perfect. OK, the next section that we're going to explore are effects. And effects are different things that you can do to images and shapes, like cropping images. And cropping images basically mean, let's say you have this huge image of all these different buildings, but you want to focus on just this one building in this picture. Cropping allows you to zero in on different aspects of that picture and cut out all the rest. And that's what effects allows you to do. It also allows you to flip objects. Let's say you want to flip it to where it's facing the other way. That, so that would, that's what would allow you to do that. Transparency, that allows you to, let's say you have an image that's full color, but you say, I want this to fade a little bit. I want it to be a little bit see-through. Transparency will allow you to do that. You can also go to edit images and edit images gets really deep because you can change colors. You can add shadow to your pictures. Uh, you can do all types of different. You can add different types of filters. We all know what filters are because we see those on like Instagram and adding all types of different colors. So it has its own filters that you can use. And we'll see that when we go back to our flyer. The next part are elements. And elements, you can see that here in, in the, this, the left menu. Elements are a little bit different. Elements are different things like not just photos, but videos, audio. You can have different charts that you like, let's say you want a, like a bar graph or something in your graphic. You can plug in the numbers and you can insert that chart into your, onto your canvas, into your flyer or whatever you're doing. You can also, with these elements, you can change their color, you can change their sizes. Another really great thing that you can do are, if you see these objects here, they're called frames. And frames are really cool because they have all these different shapes that you can insert your picture in. So you can insert into a circle at the most simple. And you, I'll show you these. We have all types of different shapes that you can insert your picture in and it has that shape. It just gives it a really cool effect. I have a quick tip here. There is so much you can do with elements, but you don't want to do too much because sometimes, sometimes doing a little is just enough, but you can do too much. You don't want to go crazy because there is just so much. You could be like, okay, I want a frame here. I want a video here. I want a, 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 this part here. And that's, yeah, okay. You don't want to lose the message that you're trying to show by trying to do too much. So just take this with a grain of salt. <clears throat> use, the, use these different elements where you can, but don't, oh, we don't go overboard. All right, text. Now that you've decided what your flyer looks like, now you got to make sure that what it's going to say is done effectively. You can go to text here. It's also in that menu. And once you get here, you can add these different types of text. It gives you, it starts with a header text, which is larger. Then it has a subheader. And then it has the body information of what you're going to be showing. And you can also change the colors. You can change the effects and sizes of the different fonts. You can add bullet points. These are typically things that you normally see in documents and things like that. You can see in like Microsoft Word. So yeah, th those are pretty easy. Another quick tip I have for your text. You want, okay, the title is the most, that, that's the thing that's going to grab the attention. It's the largest thing. It typically starts out at the top. Now, as you go down, the graphic, the text is going to get smaller, but it's going to get more detailed. So the more detailed information is typically going to be the smaller information that is further down the page. But the largest, that's the attention grabber. That's going to be the largest. It gets the attention. That's the first thing that the person's going to read when they see your design. The part underneath it, the subheader, 
That part is the part that tells a little bit more information about what's going on, but it's smaller than the header. And so that goes along with what I'm saying, how you start off with the largest information, which is the title, which is the most vague, but it's the attention grabber. And then the subheader adds a little bit more information. It's smaller. And that's how it goes as it proceeds down the page. Now. All right, positioning and aligning objects. Once we have our images, our text, everything on our canvas, now we can start to position different things and move them around. And positioning is awesome because you can play around with the priority of objects. Let's say you have one shape, you have another shape, you want one shape in front of the shape like it's sitting on top of it. So you can play around with that and have them and you can have them one on top of the other and vice versa. If you have multiple objects, you can actually have them aligned in a row to where they are all the same height, they are all spaced out the same distance. And this is something you typically want to do once you have everything on the board and you want to decide the orientation. My quick tip, I know I've said it a lot, less is more, give your objects room to breathe. This allows a more legible, easier to read, and easier to follow document. So we'll see that when we're working. So now let's go ahead and go back to our design. Okay. I believe that we are here we go. Okay, we are back. Everybody can see that. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, so let's say we, are, we, we, we have our image in the background. We wanna change these images. So all we gotta do, we go over here to photos. We got a bunch of different photos. Let's say we want some of the photos that, that we've already used. Okay, we want the, okay, I wanna pick, let's say I want a picture of my face. I can drag it here and it shows up. It's right there. You can also take images out of these different frames. I can right click on it and I can hit detach image and it's back. So I can do that with multiple images with this one. Uh, let's say we want another image here. We have some kids doing sports. So let's say we're gonna put that there. We want another image here. Let's go and let's find an image here in our photos. Let's say we want a picture of a dog. So I go to dog. All right, here we go. I like this dog right here. So I can take this over here oh, and I want to drag it. And I like that picture of this dog. All right, now, but let's say, you know what? I want this dog to face the other way. So now we're starting to deal with effects. I want this dog to face the other way. So I can detach this picture. So we're going to go back to effects up here. Let's see, I want to, Flip this pick. Oh, I keep dropping it. Sorry about that. And that brings me to another great point. When you want to undo, you can just come up here and undo the last thing you did, or you can hit Control Z. Great tool, because we're all going to make mistakes. All right, so we come up here to these different effects. I want to flip this. So I come over here to flip. I want to flip horizontal. I like that better. So now, Gonna drop it back in there, and that's how that's how that works. Let's say this block here. I want to. I, I I don't. Let's say I want this block here to be a little bit transparent. So you have the, this row of effects here. This is the transparency button, and you can hover over these objects. It'll tell you what they do. So let's say I want this to be more transparent. So I can change it like that. It looks like it's two different objects and it makes that more transparent. But let's say I wanna leave it how it is. So I'm gonna hit Control Z and bring it back to where it was. All right, next part. Now we have different elements. We already had some elements here like these circles, but let's say we wanna have some other type of elements here. Now this is the part I said, don't go crazy because there's so much here. There's so much here that you can use. You have different shapes. And if you come over here to see all, it'll show you all the different shapes that you have. And it's a lot. 
And these are different things that you can bring to your screen. Uh, if I want to block, it puts that there, all types. And, and once these shapes are here, you can change their colors based on this over here. So I'm going to delete that. Let's look at some of our other things. We have graphics here that we can use. Bunch of different graphics you can use. Some of them even move. So for online, it really gives a really nuanced look that a lot of people won't expect. So let's say I want this bubble here and now that's there. So it's just awesome. But that's why I say, that's why I say, you can do too much. <laughs> Don't do too much. Okay, so these are some of the graphs of the charts I was talking about. And these are pretty cool because you can have, let's say I wanna show this pie chart here. So it has this pie chart and you can change the items. You can change like what the different percentages are. Really cool stuff. But we're not gonna be using that. We're gonna go down here to frames. Frames is a really cool thing to use because you have a bunch of different types. So let's say, I like this kind of oblong shape. I want something a little bit more advanced than, than circles. So I'm gonna put this here, there it is. Now, let's say I want my dog picture in that. So I can take my dog picture, let's say I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna detach it, and I'm gonna put my dog picture in that. So now I wanna delete this one. And this is what, this is the picture I want right here. So that's how frames work. And then if you don't want that there, you can just right click, detach the image like so. So that's, that's how elements work. So much you can do, just be careful not to do too much. Now, the next part that we're going to get into is text. So you can also zoom in if you're having a difficult time seeing, if we wanna really focus on some of these texts. So let's say, okay, I want this to be creating eye-catching graphics too. So all you gotta do is just highlight that, creating. Oh, let's see, this needs to go, uh, that's fine. See, I have too much space, but that's fine. So we have all this, but let's say, okay, this is too large. So you can come up here, change the font size of it. You can also move it around to wherever you want it, just like that. I have my subheader here. Let's say I want to change this to more design, less clutter or something like that. Okay, so let's say we have this part. Let's say I want it in yellow. You come over here. You have a bunch of different pick colors to choose from. You can choose it from here or you some you already have loaded. So. I have that right there. And that's a great thing about these templates. They already have all the colors that the templates use there, already at your disposal. So if you need to change something to a color that matches the template you already have, it's already loaded. All right. And let's see, another thing, well, that's all that is for the text. Very simple, very straightforward. <clears throat> you could change the the font that you're using here, you can just come over here and you can choose from a bunch of different fonts. All, there are all different types of fonts you can use and uh, depending on however you want your flyer to speak. All right, now, the last part in terms of the design we're gonna have is positioning and aligning the objects. So let's say, we have, oh, let's say we, okay, you know what, that's fine. Let's say we have this picture of my face. <clears throat> okay, and here's another cool thing. You can copy the different objects if you need to. I just hit Control C and Control V and it copies the objects. Or you can right click and hit copy and then right click, paste. Oh, sorry about that. That's not what I meant to do. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so let's say we have these three images, but they're all over the place, but I want them to be even, evenly laid out. So I click on all of the pictures. 
And the way you do that is I right click, I'm holding the shift button to click on all the pictures. I can come over here to position and this shows how they can be positioned. Let's say I want all these in a row. So all I would need to do is, and it puts them all in a row, but they're still off in terms of how they're spaced out. So I come back, I highlight all of them. I come back here and let's say, okay, I want them distributed evenly. And that would be here, spaced evenly, tidy up, boom. And everything is spaced out the way I want. But let's say, but I want my dog picture in the front. All I gotta do is click on my dog picture. I go back to position. And then you look up here and you can move an object forward. You can move an object backward. Let's say you're gonna bring it to the front. If I bring this to the front, now this dog picture is gonna be on top of every element on the page. And that's what happens. So this object is in front of every element on the page. So that's how positioning works. It allows you to move things to, to the front, move things to the back based on priority. And then it allows you to space out objects in relation to other objects and in relation to what's going on the canvas. I know there's a lot going on, but I just wanted you guys to be able to see all the different things that you can do with the program. Okay, once we're done, all we need to do, <clears throat> all we need to do is go to share up here. And then when you go to share, this allows you to either download the image yourself you can hit this to get to, if you wanna print the object, but we, we will discuss that at a different time. You can share this based on whatever social media you're trying to use. But then the coolest aspect is you can share this with another person or multiple people. So you just type in their email address and what's gonna happen is it's going to send them a link that, and that this project has been shared with them. And then you can give them different permissions to just look at the graphic or even make their own edits. So that's the awesome part to where somebody can do a design for you. And let's say you wanna use this design later on. At least with this program now, you can use that same design that you have and change the information. So that's what they call repurposing. And that's one of the beauties of using Canva. And so once that's done, or another cool thing about it is you auto, it automatically saves. So everything you do automatically saves your file. So if we go back here and we go to my, back to the menu and you see the list of projects here. So this is the project that we just did. So everything is automatically saved there. And there it is. There's the information that there's everything we just created automatically saved. You don't have to worry about losing it. It's right there. So let me go back to our presentation. We are coming up to the end. Did that? Is it, oh, no, I didn't share yet. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. Okay. So we already talked about downloading and publishing. I already gave you that quick tip that Canva saves, automatically saves your work. So what did we learn today? We learned how to log into your Canva account, how to lay out your canvas, how to use images, how to use effects, how to use elements, how to use text, how to position and align different objects, and how to save and publish your project. So now, I have a quick question. How long do you guys think I have been using Canva? A few months. All right, all right. Anybody else? Feel free to unmute if you'd like and you can share your thoughts. In the chat room, one year, years, one month. Yeah. It seems like you are doing so much that you have all of this expertise and it took you a while to build it, which is excellent. And I'm so glad that you're willing to share it with us. Absolutely. Absolutely.
All right, I will stop sharing my screen because I think we are at the end, but I've been doing this for about three weeks. I've been doing it what? for about, yeah, about three weeks. So if I can do this, I know you guys can. I know you guys can. Wow. So th that is it for this Canva, this Canva tutorial. If you guys have any questions or you guys want to reach out, you have any questions about Canva or any ways that I can help you guys become experts in Canva or if you guys need any help in terms of design, websites, flyers, any of those type of things, you can find me here at, you can email me at info at simvistacreations.com or you can go to my website. It's www.simvistacreations.com slash imagination. And that basically allows you to schedule a free 10 minute imagination session. And I can help you bring your creations to life. So I will, I'll put this information in the chat. I'll stop sharing for now. And now we can open up the floor to any questions that you may have. All right. I so again, listen, we want to thank you so much, Salim, because your three weeks worth of knowledge is just fantastic. Now, the gentleman, I, I, can't, I remember just a comment came in and said, Prakash, I think he said, uh, you've been using Photoshop a long time, so that might make it a little bit easier of a journey for you using Canva. I just know that even as somebody who's used Photoshop as well, I, it does... Canva certainly does put a really pretty bow on it <laughs> and making yes. it a little bit more simplistic. And the learning curve is not as great, I think. Maybe that might help a lot of people with it with it as well. But we do have some questions and um, some that you did answer, but I'm going to reiterate because I want to make sure we get everything. So I just scrolled through the top of the chat. I was going to read out Samir was asking how this flyer or any other Canva design can be used in email communication with our beneficiaries, perhaps at a nonprofit. Can you easily export the design from Canva and embed it into an email, let's say for a monthly newsletter? Based on what you were saying before on the exporting of it, I believe that is an option that you're able to do. That looks to be something that we're able to, to do. Can you apply drop shadows? Drop um, Shadows. Yes, you can. <clears throat> Drop Shadows was actually in, I believe that was in the effects tab. Okay. Yeah. So you can have, I guess you guys want me to show you guys? Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Let's see here. All right. I'm going to share my screen again. Let me go back to, all right, share screen. Okay. You guys can see that? Yes. Okay, so let's say we wanna add some drop shadows here. Okay, well, let's say we, we wanna do this one right here. So we have this object here. Let's say we wanna add drop shadows. We can come over here. I believe that it is X. Oh, the, the effects are all up here. Oh, let's see here. All right, let's see if I, no, it's not, that's animate. Let's see, edit image. Okay, so edit image. So <clears throat> let's say we have this image, we wanna add a shadow. So we come over here, we see we have shadows. So we can see all the different types we have. Let's say we wanna have this drop shadow here. So this does it based off of the image and not the shape. You can also change the level of shadow. Let's say we want it to be, darker. We want the offset to be more. So yeah, you could definitely play around with the drop shadow here. Let's see if we can add. So we can do it with images. Let's see if we can do it with some of these shapes. So we have, we have this shape right here. Let's see what we can do with this. You guys are asking me stuff on the fly. Okay. Let's see here. Nope. Those are colors. Okay, so we have these different objects that we have, but we want these objects to have a drop shadow. Oh, okay. Let's see. Let's animate. 
So we know we can add objects to images. Some of these may already have, okay. So I think some of these already have shadows on them. And I think this is one thing, and I'm glad that you asked that there, you can't do everything with Canva. There are certain things that it has its limitations. In this case, we may be able to do drop shadows with shapes and we know we can do it with images. In terms of shapes, I, I may have to come back to you on that one. Yeah. Fair enough on that one. And Joe, let me know that I did, re I missed your question. So that was Ooh, not what was good. the question? <laughs> Joe is asking, is there a way to link text to boxes? So text flows onto them in a series, like you can link text boxes in Quark or InDesign. Uh, okay, I use InDesign so that text flows into them. Can you give an example of that? Like Joe. It into them. Yeah, sure. So when you're when you're doing layout of a multi-page document in Quark, for example, you can create text boxes on page one, link it to a text box on, on page two, link that to a text box on page three. And then when you flow a large document into text box one, it automatically when you paste it into text box one, it automatically flows into two, three, four. You could have them set up so they go in series and, and they're an un, it's an unbroken document rather than making separate text boxes with, with pieces of text that you have to cut yourself. I see, I see. And you know, you, you're right. You can definitely do things like that in uh, InDesign. I have now, that may be on the scope of Canva. I know they do have a link. They do have a, a link button here. You can, you, yeah, can, you can link to an outside text. I know that, but no, this would be a layout question as we described. Mm -hmm. And well, I think the answer is, I think the answer is no, but I just wanted to find out. And yeah. Joe, I've been using Canva for quite some time as well. I have not seen that because it's a great feature. I'm going to go hunt it down if it's possible, but I have not yeah, even I seen that I, feature. I think that's uh, that's something that would be more specific to an InDesign, which is heavily which heavily focuses on documents and making sure that it has the information. But uh, I don't think that is the scope of of uh, Canva's. I don't think it's in the scope of uh, in Canva doing things like that since it's more graphics oriented rather than the text oriented. I agree. Okay. Um, Margaret is asked, oh, thank you so much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Margaret is asking what export formats are available in Canva? Let's have a look. So we're going up to the share. Mm -hmm. Should I share my screen for this? I probably should. Or you can I just can, read it out. I can actually yeah. jump in here and explain yeah, that. I uh, I'm with Three Choices Creative. I am a professional designer, but I have a lot of nonprofit clients who are using Canva and when they provide materials that they've designed, a lot of times they're giving me bitmaps or something that I can't do anything with. And I'm trying to figure out what's the best way for professional designers to take materials that have been, they've gotten 80% of the way there with Canva. And now they're trying to hand them off to somebody who does want to do something like linking text, that sort of stuff. Okay, that's a great question. And I, I understand where you're coming from because I do work with a print shop. And if you don't, if you have a, you can have a regular Canva, you can have a regular Canva account or you can have a pro Canva account. A regular Canva account doesn't allow you to create objects that are print ready. So there's no bleeds or anything like that. So that can be difficult because now once somebody sends me a design and they exported it in, however they need to send it to me, I have to go in and create the bleed with the different, the different ways I have to do it. And in terms of what you said, yes, that is an issue. So I think in this situation, it helps because when you know that they are using Canva and they're creating designs, that's going to make your job more difficult to make it print ready or however it needs to. But now, because you're, you know how to use Canva, I think you'll be able to make those edits that you need. I, I found that, like the gentleman said before, about being able to have a document that or a text that can flow to the next page or whatever. 
I'll say, I'll have to, let's say, okay, I like the design that they created on Canva. I may have to take this text out and export it as a graphic and put it in InDesign. So I have the background there and then I'll have to like add that aspect using like a more advanced program like InDesign. So for more advanced designers, they are going to have to, they are, they are gonna have to use like Canva in conjunction with more advanced software like we tend to use. Uh, Canva cannot do it all. There, there's no program that is just for everybody. This one is user-friendly. It's designed for everybody to use. But I feel like if we have the knowledge of how to use it, we can take what they use and add what we know to create a more advanced document. Yeah. And the nice part for the nonprofit sector is that it ends up saving them money. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one thing I've noticed is that with this, uh, let's say I create some flyers in Photoshop and I'm doing work with clients that need a lot of edits. So they have a lot of people that are giving their information and they're constantly saying, Hey, we like what you made with that edit. Can you send, can you make these more edits? And it's that can drive us crazy. So now with this, let's say I create the design in Photoshop. It's just the background. I put it in Canva. I put the text in there. I share it with them. Now they can make any edits that they need. They don't have to worry about the background because they're not messing with that. We already created that. And now we can put some of the onus on them to make those changes. So that makes our lives easier in terms of time. So I think that to answer your question, that combination of Canva and more advanced software together, that's what's going to help and what's going to allow us to do our job. I thank hope you that. so much for that. Yeah, thank you. All righty. Oh, and just to go back in as well and clarify the types of formatting. I know that you were talking about bitmaps and so forth, but just for those who use generalized things, PDFs, you can export out your particular creation in a PDF. You can make it a JPEG, a PNG. Uh, if you design in PowerPoint, a de design a PowerPoint type uh presentation, what Salim has, you're able to export it into PowerPoint. It has a number of formats that you're able to export into. So hopefully that's helpful. One other note, since we're dealing with nonprofits, we want to let you know that Canva is typically free for nonprofits. It's Canva Pro that you end up getting. It's typically free. It's not across the board and it does take them a little while to go through verify and all like that. But if you have a nonprofit, feel free to send in your request. Go to canva.com. It is listed on there. And uh, if you meet their qualifications, you get that for free for a few of the members of your organization. So we wanted to make you aware of that as well. One other question though, Salim, uh, it says, can this be used similar to Figma or Sketch? And I see that's probably a <laughs> high-tech thing over there because I'm not, <laughs> I don't use it. I honestly don't use either of those. I use, I mean, I, I use Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. When it comes to sketching, because I, I, am, I am an artist that draws, I use a, a completely different program called Clip Studio Paint. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, and thank you, Kevin, for putting that in. I wasn't scrolled down, so I didn't see that. So thank you very much uh, for going back in and typing in where how you can export. So I went through, I believe that I addressed most of the questions that are in there. Salim does have his contact information in, and you are more than welcome to reach out to him directly. Were there any other questions that we may have omitted or something that came to mind and you just want to go ahead and ask at this time? No? Okay. It's all right if you unmute, you can. Oh, posting. Okay, somebody said posting to Instagram. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. No, you definitely can. You definitely can post to Instagram. Not only can you create graphics that use Instagram's dimensions and they have Instagram specific templates, but when you export, you can also export with not only Instagram business, but Instagram personal as well. <laughs> so they, ha they have all types of different ways to export all types of social media. I'm seeing Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Facebook group. Pinterest, LinkedIn, 
all types. That's fantastic. Again, thank you so much, Salem. This was uh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go ahead. I know that there's one more question in there, but before it, it slips my mind, I wanted to share with you all the fact that we, are, again, are TechSoup Connect, and we wanted to just bring you to this page just to let you know that there are upcoming events that are listed here already through the month of August. So we'd love for you to go in and sign up. I'm going to put in the chat, the link to this page. So then you'll be able to, to go in and sign up for those, have it on your calendar. So that way you can become much more aware of some of the other things that we're doing later on in the months to come. So I wanted to share that part with you as well. And let's go back to the question that I, I missed here. I'm seeing uh, both, but I'm not in a Canva Pro account. Yeah, someone had said, oh. I think it was Stephanie. She had said that she was told that it was Instagram. Okay, that it was, it was Instagram and not personal, not the personal Instagram. But what I'm seeing both Instagram and the Instagram business and Instagram personal that you can export your graphic to. But I was saying that I'm in a Canvas Pro account, so I don't know what the first Canva account allows. I know the mm -hmm. Pro account allows both. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I unmuted this time. They're testing the fire alarms in my building, so that's why I, I don't wanna be on unmuted. So but, I have the Pro account as well, but when I went to post it to Instagram, it said it had to be a business account, an really? Instagram business account. And so I have both. So I went ahead and posted it on my personal account. So when you created the graphic, did you create the graphic using the Instagram layout? No, I did it in Canva and I was trying to post it to Instagram. Oh, no, I know. I, I was saying like when you first created your canvas, did you, did you create using the, using Instagram's layout? I believe I did. They're, they're buying fire alarms. They're getting closer to my <laughs> She gets to get hit with it. Yes, I believe I used the, the, okay. the template for the Instagram. Yes. Okay. I'll have to look into that then. I haven't done it with Instagram yet in terms of exporting a graphic. So I am not 100% sure. Okay, thank you. Um, I did uh, uh, connect with you on LinkedIn. I'll okay. probably be emailing you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. That is wonderful. We love to hear it. This, this is called TechSoup Connect. So let's do that. Uh, again, everyone, you have been fantastic. I didn't see any additional questions in there. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up for the day. I want to thank my co-host who's been in here interjecting and helping out with the chats and with all the other direct questions that are coming in and so forth. So you guys have been fantastic. My name again is Danita Pimienta. Uh, you can reach me in, in, on LinkedIn or you can reach me with the my email address, danita at care.org. We love having all of you here today. This has been another TechSoup Connect presentation and we appreciate you being here this afternoon. Have a blessed day, everyone. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Kim, are you still on? Did she go? Yes, ma'am. Oh, good. Okay, bear with me one second, okay? Okay. So, Lem, you were fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate it. That was really, that was really fun. Yeah, everybody, all the comments were great. Very helpful. They were glad that you were giving this much information and walking them through it. <laughs> no, that was helpful because the questions really let you see what you are able to do that I might not have been able to get to myself. Mm -hmm. So you know, that was, that was helpful for me as well. It is, it is. Okay, Ms. Kim, I wanted to, because your question, reiterate your question again, I'm sorry. 
because I know it was something that I had to pull up. So go ahead, tell me. Yeah, so in the beginning, the audience view for Zoom. Mm, okay. And so I had that same challenge yesterday trying to present. Yes. And so I definitely would love to know <laughs> where to change that so I don't have that happen to me again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you so you'll be able to, to see it. And um, then I'll show you the other parts that come up. Here's my Canva and I'm gonna use Salim's presentation just because I can. Ah, so it's so sitting here. So, I thought you said I had to go into Zoom. You do, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> so are you, and I am, hold tight one second. Now tell me what you're seeing on your screen. Are you still just seeing me or are you seeing? I, I see your presentation with, okay, the, good. with the little Alrighty. squares at the bottom. Got it, good, good. Okay, so up here, when you um, go to present, mm -hmm. there are several types of presentations that you can get. So standard, presenter view, all like that. You can present and, and record. So what I do is typically just the standard view. So if you mm -hmm. hit that and what sometimes will come up in most cases what will come up, hold tight, sorry. Let me go back out of that. Cause I did a PowerPoint and this happened. So I, I didn't even, there it is. <laughs> okay, let me go back out so you could see it. So okay. it's called presenter view. Okay. Standard is just, standard is if you were doing a regular PowerPoint presentation and you're just ready to start it. Presenter view. When you hit present, I'm hopeful that you can see my screen. Do you see the part where it says audience window? Can you see that? I see the big one and I see the little bitty windows at the bottom, your next screens. I see presenter says, window. And it says presenter window over okay, top. So then you can't see the audience window. Okay, so mm -hmm. then here, let me stop sharing this way. Hold on. Because what I want you to be able to see is what's on my screen. So then you will not have a, a difficult time with, um, with being able to get it out. I love Zoom. Did I tell you that I love it? <laughs> I do too. I use it a lot, but I haven't presented in a while. And so that was new to me. Yeah, it's it, like it wants it, to, it, it hid over my actual items where I need to stop sharing. There we go. All righty. Let me share my whole screen with you. Oh. The times I don't like doing that is because of the fact that I have to look at myself looking at myself. <laughs> 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 and I'm like looking at myself over here so that's what it is all right can you see hopefully you can see everything well yeah it's still okay. the same screen yes got it okay so then we're on present and then presenter view and you hit present so prayerfully you'll be able to see that there's an audience window here do you yes. see this Okay, yeah. so now the audience window, don't hit enter full screen mode. What you do is, and I'm going to have to move this away, you go into Zoom, and typically, of course, because you're watching, it may not work, but here, you stop sharing on there. You'll go into Zoom, and you will, come on, give me that. Where's my because I have two screens. And so the screen that I was presenting on gave me my screen, but the screen that I wasn't presenting on gave the audience view. It was really weird. Can I offer some advice? Sure. Here it is. Okay. I, I have multiple screens as well. And okay. when I came to share my screen, you have the option to share your screen by screen but then you also have the option to share by the audience view. So whenever I was gonna be sharing the presentation, I just made sure I looked for the one that said audience view 
and that was the one that popped up. Oh, so, okay. so on my screen, can you see where I've hit the audience view? You're not this sharing. Is the one. <laughs> it did for a second. It did for a second, and then yes. it went away. Okay. Yeah, it's doing it, but yes, okay. okay. Yes, audience window, yes. Okay, so audience window is, the problem that I'm having is being able to show you that in Zoom, you have the option of being able to see it. It's, it comes up yeah. just like Google, for example, if you use that as your browser. This is a selection here, audience window. This is a option that you have when you actually share all mm -hmm. of the, the windows. And if you just click on audience window and you share it, you will be able to then go back in and see all of your notes, everything. Yeah. Does okay. it make sense to you? Okay. And, and I don't know why, if you're looking at my full screen that you can't see it, but I guess it's something in there with, with the but, way that it's doing it. I don't but know. But why do you say don't hit the full screen? Because isn't that what I want? Yes. However, in most cases, when you're presenting, you have your notes, yeah. right? Okay. Correct. So if you go right into it, then what it did to me is it blocked my notes. You have one screen? Yes. Okay. But you have two. So you might be able to, if you have multiple screens, you might be able to do that. For me, it blocked my notes and I okay. want to be able to <laughs> see my notes. Correct. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to be full screen. As, it, as long as you're sharing that box for the audience window from Zoom, that's what they're going to see. It doesn't actually need to be in full screen for everybody to see it because it's going to show what's in that box and every if that's going to be full screen for everybody that's viewing it. So does so, that kind of make sense? So even if, like here, if I shrunk this box down. So you and, could have a split screen, Danita. Yes, and I could. Yeah. yeah. But and then pull it over and but on audio on the presenter mode itself, it leaves me like that. It's a great thing. I wish I could show you, but it doesn't show. But see how tiny this audience window portion is on my mm -hmm. screen. Yeah, that part is all that has to be up there. However, it turns into full screen for anybody else is looking is what Salim is saying. Okay. Okay, I, I will gladly be your test person if you want to work oh, good. through that. <laughs> okay, because I do want to be able to do it outside of it blocking my notes because I, I need those. <laughs> 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 yes, so with that being the case, thanks for sending that to me. I'm going to go ahead and we will probably set up a couple of chats to just keep going back and forth on it. It's all a learning curve. So I'm not uh, ashamed to say that's not something that I know how to do completely, but it has been working when I do share even just that small box of mm -hmm. everything. Thank so y'all so much. This was um, phenomenal. Great. I had no idea about some of the features that you were sharing. And so I'm very appreciative. I'm so glad that I'm here today. So Danita, you are the best. So thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and definitely reach out to you. So therefore we can, we can all sort of just stay, <laughs> yeah, stay on this learning awesome. journey. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I hope that it, it does end up working out where we can all be able to see our notes, see the rest of the screens and all like that, but we'll figure it out at some point. Okay. Did Great. you want to add anything? So I see this is recording. How can mm -hmm. I get that recording? Oh, I should have announced that. I'm sorry, I didn't. Within 24 to 48 hours, the link is sent out. The gentleman who does it, he is a little bit backed up right now, so it might be a little bit longer. That's fine. So yeah, but usually it goes out to everyone who is registered uh, for the event. So that's why I told you to register because I knew that you could awesome. get that link. <laughs> so it just take a little bit and, and he'll be able to send that out uh, shortly. Not a problem. I appreciate it. No worries. No worries. All righty. You guys have a blessed day.